Hi, and welcome to the University of Leeds Open Day and to this taster session on how do reactions behave in very cold environments. My name is Paul Seekins and I'm a professor at the School of Chemistry with research interests into reaction kinetics. Now, how do reactions normally depend on temperature? Well, normally, rates of reactions increase with temperature. And indeed, if we want to make a reaction go faster, then we will generally heat it up because the rate coefficient increases significantly with temperature. And this was first quantified by the Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius around the turn of the last century and formulated within the famous Arrhenius equation that links the rate coefficient K to the temperature of which the reaction is occurring. And you've probably done some Arrhenius plots where you plot log, natural log of the rate coefficient versus 1 over T. And the gradient of that, for example, can be used to extract the activation energy. Now, let's think about some of the implications of the Arrhenius chemistry, of the Arrhenius equation for some chemical applications. So if we consider a reaction that has an activation energy of 20 kilojoules per mole and takes one hour to complete at 300 K, what, how long will it take for that reaction to complete at some lower temperatures? So for example, at 200 Kelvin, which is typical of the temperature of the Earth's stratosphere, that same reaction will take three days to complete. At 100 Kelvin, typical of the atmosphere of Titan, one of the moons of Saturn, that same reaction will take a thousand years. And at 50 Kelvin, typical of the temperature of the interstellar medium, then that will take 2.4 times 10 to the 13 years which is longer than the lifetime of the universe. So given that chemistry occurs in all of these environments, how does it occur? It must be occurring in some different way from the Arrhenius type mechanism. So why does the Arrhenius equation mostly work? Well, here's an energy profile typical of a normal reaction. Uh, and we classify this barrier uh, where we're at the transition state as being the activation energy. And as we move from reagents up here, what's happening is that bond breaking, which costs us energy, is dominating over bond making. And then as we move away from the transition state down to the product, then bond making, which releases energy, dominates over bond breaking. And we move downhill in energy to our product. But what about a reaction if no bonds need breaking, if all we're doing is forming a bond? Well, in that case, the energy profile looks quite different. And we move smoothly from reagents to products downhill in energy all the time. So in this case, reactions no longer slow down as temperature decreases. In fact, it's the opposite. They get faster as temperature decreases. Let's have a look at some applications then. What, what regions is this important? The first one to consider is stratospheric chemistry, where the ozone layer in the stratosphere plays a very important role in protecting life on Earth by absorbing a significant amount of the harmful UV radiation that comes from the sun. Now, during the 70s and 80s, it was realized that a lot of this ozone was disappearing uh, and it was discovered that this was due to reactions of chlorine atoms that would react efficiently with ozone even at these low temperatures to form ClO and then ClO would react with oxygen atoms to regenerate our chlorine. And so this means that one chlorine atom could go around this cycle removing ozone several hundreds if not thousands of times. Now, the, ozone, the chlorine came from CFCs that were used in man-made chemicals that were used in a variety of important applications. Now, stratospheric chemistry is, in fact, a good news story when it was realized that there were problems, that nations got together uh, and 
signed the Montreal Protocol back in 1987 that banned the production of CFCs. And we can see since then that the ozone hole has recovered to uh, a certain extent. So this white line here represents the average ozone area uh, over the last 20 years or so. And the black line is the area of the ozone hole in this last season. And we can see that it lies significantly below the white line. So we can look at data from a number of years. The area of the ozone hole grew during the 70s and 80s, plateaued around 2000 and so, and is now starting to decline. And the minimum amount of ozone uh, is also starting to recover. So this is a good news story. It shows that where chemists can understand phenomena, can come up with solutions, then we can tackle complex environmental issues uh, such as the ozone hole. And that's good news moving forward to tackling things like climate change. The second environment I want us to think about is Titan. Titan is one of the moons of Saturn. It's got a methane and nitrogen based uh, atmosphere. And our reason for being interested in, in it is that this might be a museum, if you like, of what the Earth's atmosphere was like before the evolution of life uh, and hence the production of oxygen in our atmosphere. So here's an image, uh, an artist's impression of what Titan might actually look like where you have lakes, but these are not lakes of water, these are lakes of hydrogen, hydrocarbons. Now this reaction here is particularly important in the atmosphere uh, of Titan, and it's one of these reactions where the rate coefficient increases as the temperature goes down. But what we want to focus on is not just the rate coefficient, but it's which products are formed. We can see here there's two types, two reaction pathways that we can follow. We studied this reaction here at the University of Leeds. We generated here at time t equals zero uh, CN radicals by a laser pulse. Uh, and then we were able to follow the decay of CN, but we could also follow the production of H atoms, which was shown by the black points here. And what we can see is that there is a a temporal correlation, a one-to-one -one relationship between the disappearance of the CN and the production of the H, which shows that the predominant reaction is this one here, generating a more complex molecule, which can actually undergo even further chemistry than the H atom. So finally, what about very cold environments? In the interstellar medium, Temperatures are very low, between 10 and, and 50 Kelvin, but nevertheless, chemistry still occurs. And a whole range of molecules have been identified. Now, this chemistry in this environment has to be really super efficient because the time between collisions of molecules is measured in years, if not centuries. So my colleague, Professor Duane Hurd, has studied this reaction uh, here at Leeds. And it's a very interesting uh, reaction here, this reaction between OH radical and methanol. At high temperatures, we have a positive, if you like, normal Arrhenius temperature dependence, implying we go over a barrier. But at low temperatures, then the rate increases. Okay? So what's happening here? Well, here's the reaction profile. It looks a little bit similar to what we saw before, but there is this complex here. And this is where the OH and the methanol are forming hydrogen bonds. So they're forming this pre-reaction complex. Now at high temperatures, our reagents have got lots of energy and they don't notice this complex. They just go shooting over the, the lowest barrier and form water and this particular isomer here. However, at low temperatures, the reactants fall into this complex. And they spend quite a lot of time in this complex. And what happens here is that they're now actually able to tunnel by a quantum mechanical phenomena. They can tunnel through the barrier and come out at the different isomer.
So this is a quantum phenomena. It's one of the exciting things that you'll learn about in your first couple of years of studies uh, here at the University of Leeds. So let's summarize what we've covered. Arrhenius was right for most reactions. Indeed, rates increase with temperature. But for reactions where no bonds need to be broken, then reactions are fast at low temperature and don't follow the Arrhenius equation. We've seen important examples that are relevant to our atmosphere and to the atmosphere of Titan. We've seen that studying kinetics and products is important. And we've shown that quantum mechanical effects can produce really interesting behavior and you'll have a chance, an opportunity to explore new types of chemistry during your time at Leeds. So finally, thanks for listening uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual day here at the University of Leeds.